today's session. Today's session starts from um, 12 o'clock until 2 o'clock, and I should just welcome everybody to your second session. And today's session, we are covering study unit three, which is your descriptive analysis. It's a build up of what we did uh, yesterday. So remember yesterday, if we can recap on what uh, happened, we understood the basic concept when it comes to statistics. We looked at what we mean by statistics, what are the branches of statistics, which are your, your descriptive and inferential statistics. So today we are doing descriptive statistics. And we also uh, looked at uh, the, uh, the terms, that relates to what we be what we will be doing in statistics. That that are your population and the measures that comes from the population are parameters and the population. If it's too big, we select the sample and the measures that come from a sample. Those are your statistics. And then we also said once we have collected that data, but we ask questions. We look at variables. So what are those variables? Variables are just characteristics that describes the population or the sample, and within a variable we get a data, and that is what we use. It's a it's a measure or a value that corresponds to your variable. Then we also look at if we know those that we have the variables, and we know that the variables can be qualitative and can be quantitative, and we said if they are qualitative, we can put them into into categories. And also, if they are qualitative, it means they can be categorical variable. And we also said they can be also numerical variable, which we call them the quantitative variable. And those variables can either be discrete or they can be um, con uh, continuous. If they are discrete, it's something that we can uh, we count. If they are continuous, it's something that we measure. And that is what we're going to be doing today. This, uh, continuous, discrete, quantitative variables. We're going to be using those for the analysis today. Then we also went on and look at the visualization. I'm not going to go deeper into the visualization because I just wanted to remind you about the variables that we use and the types of variables to introduce today's session. So today, by the end of the session, which is a two hour session, um, we're going to use your calculator. We're going to start things with the manual calculations as well. Then I'm going to bring up some calculation, calculators where we, I show you the easy way of using your calculator to do this scientific um, or the stats calculations using your scientific calculator, which makes life easier. It saves you a whole lot of time. And you will see during the session um, what, what I mean by it will save you a whole lot of time. But you need to understand the basics because what if sometimes they don't give you uh, the calculation, but they ask you content. They ask you questions relating to how you do things. How do you calculate them? You cannot rely on only your calculator. You need to also understand your content in this regard. OK, so by the end of the session, you should be able to describe what the properties of the central tendencies are, which are your measures of central location or locality. We, sh uh, we should be looking at the variation, how variable uh, or how far apart your data is from your mean. We should look at the, the, the distribution of your data. Remember, we covered this yesterday as a snapshot when we looked at the histogram. We looked at the distribution of your data, whether it's symmetric, whether it is left skew or right skew. Today, we're also going to cover that to tell you when you use measures of central tendency or you use measures of variation, how do you check that your data is skewed or your data is symmetric? We're going to uh, not do the, the box plot and construct the box plot. That will be on Friday next week. So only for today, we're going to look at the measures of central tendencies and the measures of variation and look at the distribution of your data. And to start off with, when we look at the measures of central tendencies, there are three measures of central tendency. And what 
measures measures of central tendencies like i said it is the measure of locality it tells you where your data is located it gives you the location of your information your data by means of the spread is it do you have the average do you have so it tells you a lot about um how many number of values repeat themselves more than the others as you whether you have a middle number all those things that's what it covers and or it gets covered under the measures of central tendencies and we're only going to cover those three which the first one is the mean the mean which is the most commonly used measure of central tendency it measures it takes all the values that you have and we divide them by how many they are that is the mean so if i have one two three four five i will add one two three four five and then I will divide them by how many they are. There are only five values that I'm using, so I will just divide them by five. And that is what the mean is about. The mean is affected by extreme liars. Yes. What do I mean by that? For example, let's say I work in HR. Let's say in HR, we are giving people um, salaries. Let's say one person and 10 rand. One person and 10 rand, the other will end 20, the other one ends 30, and the other one ends 100 rand. If I calculate the mean, which tells me the average, which uh, gives me the average values of the salaries, if I need to calculate that, so I will have to add all of them. Remember, it's the sum of all of them. So I will say 10 plus 20 plus 30, plus 100 and that will give me 160 so if i add all of them they and divide them by one two three four so divide by four which is what i am saying there is the sum of all values divided by the number of values so the number of values is how many they are so there are 160 divided by four divide by four and it is equals to 40 red. So when I do the analysis and I have to report back to the executive and I tell them, oh, in this country, in this company that we have, we are paying our employees good money. On average, we pay them 40 rent. Ha! Huh. But the data tells us otherwise. So that is what we say. The mean is affected by extreme outliers because then it doesn't give the 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 correct picture because of this outlier and this is what we call an outlier or an extreme value it's a value that drags everything out out of proportion going forward so we can calculate the mean remember we are able to calculate the values from a population and from the sample so to calculate the mean using the sample information, we use the formula X bar, which is the mean, which is the sum of all the values that satisfy the observation under the sample size, the sample unit or the sample size, divided by the sample size. So if we select the sample and we do some analysis from there, we're going to, if we analyze the text score or the exam score, the average exam score of students who registered in 15, in 1610, and those who only study at the Western Cape, then it's just summing all the scores of all the students in the Western Cape region and dividing them by how many number of students are registered in the Western Cape region or who are registered for STA in the Western Cape region. That is um, the mean. For the population, is the same thing. We use the mu, which is the population parameter. Remember, this is a statistic. This is a parameter. So let's go back to that. So this is what we call a, statis a statistics because it's a measure that comes from a sample. And when it comes from the population, we call this a parameter, which is the sum of all observations that satisfy the population divided by the population size. And you can see 
that the two formula looks exactly the same. The only difference between the two formulas is that for the sample size, we use a small letter N and for the population, we use a capital letter N. But in a nutshell, the mean calculation is the same. The sum of all the observations divided by how many there are. I did the example using the extreme, uh, the outlier. So if I have the values 1, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I want to know what is the mean, which is the average, then if these are my salaries, then it means on average we pay our staff 13 rand. Or if this is in 1,000 rands, it's 1,300. If it's in 10,000, then this will be 13,000 rand. And to get that 13, we just add all of them, divide by how many they are. There are only five observations. It's 65 divided by five and they are stating, and that's how I calculated the average, the mean. Measure of central tendency is the median. The median is the middle value. Don't get confused with the mean and the median. Sometimes when your data is, uh, or your data has a lot of outliers, we prefer to use the median as the, 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 the average, because then it tells you the middle position of, or the middle value of your data set. So the median is your middle number, and it's not affected by extreme outliers. However, if you have, for example, not however, actually, when you have a lot of data in your data set, it's easy to calculate the median because, or if you have a smaller data set, let's say, for example, let, let, let me not confuse you. Let's say, for example, we have one, two, four, six, seven. When we went with the median as well, our data needs to be sorted from lowest to highest. When we work with the mean, nothing doesn't matter how your data looks like because we don't care about the order. But when you work with the median, the order is important. If I have a small data set like this, it's easy to identify my middle number because my middle value will be that value there. Because I can see if I move from left and I move also from the right, from the right, I will end up at four as my middle number. What happens if I have a huge data set? Let's say we have 20 values. And that is going to happen even in the exam. They might give you 15 values, 20 values that you need to calculate the median. To do that, you need to use a position value, a position uh, locator, or the position number. And we use this formula, n plus 1 divided by 2, to find the position of your median. Now, when you use this position, uh, allocator or the position number or the position value for the median. You will end up with two scenarios or three actually. If your number or the count, here we have one, two, three, four, five. So it means it's odd number. If your count is an odd number like this, then the middle value will be your median. It's easy to identify to get that. But if your you have, for example, even numbers, because now I have six values, which means it's an even value. Therefore, the median we will calculate by taking the average of those two positions. So what do I mean by that? When we use this position to go find the median, let's say, for example, I'm using the same example that I have here. 
there are six of them, so it will be n will be equals to six plus one because there are one, two, three, four, five, six plus one divide by divide by two. So now my data as well is not sorted. So I will have to come back and resort the data. I have a six and I have a seven so that it makes sense because your data needs to be sorted from lowest to highest. So now when we calculate the position, we get six plus one equals seven divide by two equals 3.5. And 3.5 means I can count from one and go to 3.5, it will be in the middle of, two, uh, of four and six. When it is in the middle of four and six, when it's 3.5, I need to take an average of these two values. So I will say four plus six divide by two equals. So that will give me 10 divided by two equals to five. And that will be my median. So now going back, this is my position. And this is my median. So you go and use the median position to find the median value. Let's change again. Let's say we have eight as a number there. I still have to use the median position so, to go find. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now there are seven plus one divided by two, which is eight divided by two, which is equal to four. Now I need to go find my median value, which is one, two, three, four. Therefore, my median value is six. And that's where the two points, they come in. If the values are an odd value, then the middle value will be that median. If the values are odd, oh, sorry, are even, then we take the average of the two. That is the median and how we find the median. Any questions before we move to the board? No questions? Okay, so uh, like I said, the median is not affected by extreme outliers. Now, the other measure of central tendency is what we call the mode. The mode is the most appearing number, the most frequent number, the number that appears more than the other number, not the biggest number, but the number that appears more than the other numbers. And that is what we call the mode. <clears throat> And it's also not affected by extreme outlier because we're only looking for or we're interested in the number that appears more than the rest of the other values. Sometimes, the categorical data, we can use the mode because we can find the mode of categorical data, which will just tell us which category has the most uh, a frequency or the count or the highest percentage. And that is where you can use the mode when you discuss the categorical data. But you don't use it to, ca to calculate the mode in any of the categorical data. You can use it to describe. Now, when it comes to the mode, you must understand the following. There can be no mode, there can be a mode, or there can be several modes. What do I mean by that? If I have 
two, three, four, five, six. These are my data values. If I look at these data values, I can see that there is no number that appears more than the other number. So in this instance, there is no mode. What if I have two, three, three, four, five? If I look at this, three appears more than the other numbers. So here we have a mode and the mode is three. We can also have two, three, three, four, five, five. If I look at this data set, I can see that here we have two modes. And in this instance, where we have two modes, because we have three and we also have five as a mode, we call this a bimodal data. We call this a bimodal data because it has two modes. What if I have one, oh, sorry, one, three, not 33. I must make a distinction, a clear distinction between the values. Two, two, three, three, four, four, and five. Now I have more than two modes. So here I have three modes. And the modes are two, three, and four. This we call it a multi modal data. And that concludes the measures of central tendencies. Any questions? If there are no questions, you have an, the exercise to do. No questions from my side. Okay, here is your, your, your exercise. Remember, here is your data set and this is a sample data set we can just call it a sample data set of students who are doing 3601 final year exam results these are their results and you can calculate the mean remember the mean if this is a sample we say is the mean is the sum of all observation divide by how many there are remember also that is just to add all the observation and divide them by how many they are Oh, sorry, my notification keeps on popping up on the screen. That's the mean. The median, you first need to find the position, remember? N plus one divide by two, and then locate your value. But the first step is to sort your data, then find the median. You sort your data in an ascending order, which is from lowest to highest. The mode, you are looking for the most frequent value. And that's how far I can give you hints on how to answer the question. You have 10 minutes, like I
Okay, how far are we? Are All we done? done. I actually have been clicking on on the answers. Oh. <laughs> so I gave you the answers because I was trying to to find the the picture so I can go to the other side. Anyway, th that will be the last time I give you answers. So the mean. Since I gave you the answers. Is the sum of all values, so I hope everybody got the same. Agree with the answer? Yes. 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 And the median, you went. Yes. And you found the position yes. by using n plus one divided by two, which gives there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So which will be ten plus one yes. divided by Two, which is 11 divided by 2, which will be 5.5. And if you have sorted your data in an ascending order, you will find that the median is 44.5. Agree? Yes. And the mode is the number that appears more than the others. Only 51 appears more than the rest of the numbers. Agree? Yes. Okay. Any questions? Anybody who didn't know how to answer any of them? Um, sorry, the, the only one would be for me, the medium. I actually came up with 46. Can you please take me through how you get to 44.5? Okay, so did you sort your values? So let's let's try and sort these values around. So which one is your so now talk talk to me? Tell give me your values. So my values will be now 25, 27, 31. Wait, slowly, slowly, slowly. I'm I'm writing them. 25. 27. Mm -hmm. Yes. 31. Yes. 35. Yes. 41. Yes. 51. Yes. 48. Oh, you skipped 48. I missed out 48. There we go. Okay. So you skipped 48, and then you will go to 51 and so forth. So anybody else who Thank needs to correct know. their answer? So if it's 5.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.5, it would have been those two values. And that is why they got 44.5, the average. 41 plus 48 divided by 2, which then gives you 41 plus 48 equals 89 divided by 2, which is 44.5. Anyone else? Okay, if there are no questions. Now, when we talk about the mean, the median, and the mode, we can also find the distribution by looking at the two values. They describe how the data is distributed, and they tell us the shape in terms of whether the data is skewed or is symmetric. When the mean and the median are equal, we call that symmetric. It means it's normally distributed. It's symmetrical. It's symmetric because the mean and the median are the same. When the mean is less than the median, it means there is a tail to the left 
therefore it is left skewed or we can call this negatively skewed. So it's left skewed, or we can say it is neg negatively skewed. When the median is smaller than the mean, then the tail goes to the right, and we say this, it is right skewed. Or we can say it is positively skewed. And that is the distribution when we look at the mean, the median. And we can also include the mode. Because the mode for this data set will be the same. For the mean and the median, they will be equal. For this data set, the, the mode will be, yeah, will be your mode. And on this data set, this will be your mode. Because the mode is the highest peak, is the one that has the most values in. So if we include the mode into the picture, and for this one, the mean and median and the mode will be the same. Okay, and that is the shape and the distribution when we look at the measures of central location. Now, we're going to look at the measures of variation. We're going to look at the range, the variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. We will do the standard deviation, and then we will take a five minutes break because I don't want to sit long in front of the computer and also talk long. We'll take a five minutes break so that people can go get coffee or tea or water or something, and then we will come back and we will use our calculators to calculate standard deviation, the variance, and the coefficient of variation. Then the, then the next hour, then it will be finished. Then we do exercises and so forth and so forth. Okay. So let's look at the measures of variation. What does that mean? It, because measures of variation just gives us the, the spread of your data. It tells us how far apart your data is from the mean. And if you look at this picture that uh, shows you the distribution of um, the data set, you will see that one Curve has a peak shape and the other one has a flat belly shape. And those are the results of the variability within the data. If this is our mean, and we can see that with the one with the peak, it's closer to the mean, and the one with the flat belly, most of the data sets are far away from them. So it means that the standard deviation of the one with the peak is closer, it's less, it's, it's smaller, and the one with the belly curve that is flatter, it means the standard deviation is bigger. It might be 10, it might be 5, it might be 8, 9, 10, 20, so forth. And it creates that kind of a shape. But when the standard deviation is smaller, like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 1, 2, 3, then the curve looks almost um, like it is tall. Okay, let's, under, let's learn and understand how do we calculate all these measures. The first one is the range. The range is the simplest measure of variation because we have that we have been doing the range since yesterday as well. So we know that the range is your highest value minus your lowest value, or your largest value minus your smallest value. When you calculate the range, you like the median, you have to order your data. You, your data needs to be sorted from lowest to highest. And when you do this kind of exercises, 
make sure that you recount your values and double check like we did with the exercise just now where someone missed to only one number it can give you the wrong answer which is correct on the sheet you will pick it you will choose that option because it's there but it will be the wrong one so make sure that you double check your work you recount the values and you recount the values that they gave you and see if you have the total number is the same what i like to do if if i can take you back as well one more time to that exercise what i like to do when i work with this kind of data every time i put a number like 25 i will go and scratch it in that way when i'm done with all the list of the values i will know which value haven't i included and then i can go and correct my data set again so please pay attention when you work with this kind of information okay so we did the range yesterday so in this data set we're going to start with one is our lowest and 13 is our highest so 13 minus one gives us the range so that is the spread of the data there is only some difference between the highest and the lowest the variance and the standard deviation which also are measures of central location the variance on the other hand is the average of the square deviation of the values from the mean we also do not even interpret the variance now when we calculate the variance we can calculate it for the population and we can also calculate it for for the sample if you look for the sample variance the statistic is s squared this is where also you need to pay attention when we talk about the measures that comes from a statistic from a sample which are the statistics we always use the simple letters and like the the mean we use x bar you can always remember the x bar because you know that x is x with a bar it will mean the mean s squared is your variance and s is anybody can remember s so you just need to know that that is from for the sample uh, statistic so to calculate the sample variance which is s squared you don't have to do anything with the x squared it's just the formula is the sum of your observation minus your mean which is the mean you know the formula we've calculated it previously that central location measure the mean and you square the difference divide by your sample size minus one so your small n is your sample size minus one and that calculates the sample variance the population variance which is denoted by a sigma squared and for the population parameters we use the greek letters like with the mean we use the mu with variance we use the sigma which is a sigma squared which is also the sum of your observation minus the population mean square the difference divide by the population size now if you look at the two equations they are differences the population we divide by n whereas the sample size we divide by n minus one the answers it means they will be different so you need to pay attention when you look at the question as well in the exam or in your assignment to check the statement whether they gave you the population data or they gave you the sample data because then the formulas are different to calculate the standard deviation which we can also describe as the most commonly used measure of central tendency of, of variation sorry you will notice that we will use standard deviation across the chapter now from now on when we do chapter five when we do chapter six when we do chapter seven eight nine until except when we do chapter 12 so in chapter Four and chapter 12 we don't use standard deviation and you will notice that we use that most often when we do the other calculations 
and it shows us the measures of variation about the mean. So it tells us how far apart the data is from the mean, like we did with the first uh, slide when I introduced the, the, the section. It, it tells you those differences, whether is it closer to the mean or is it far apart from the mean. And the standard deviation is just the square root uh, or the square root of your variance. So if you look at this, the equation of a variance, when we look at the sample variance, you will see that the standard deviation, we just put the square root in front of that equation. And the standard deviation has the same units as the original data, and that is why we can safely use the standard deviation to interpret the values or the data by just looking at that measure. And the same, you can calculate the population standard deviation, which is also the square root of your variance, and you can see that the equations are the same. So when we do the exercise now or the example, I'm going to only calculate the standard deviation, but I will also show you how you get the variance. And later on, when we use our calculator, then we can calculate the we can calculate the standard deviation using your calculator. Okay. If I have this data set and I, I'm told that this is a sample data which has eight variables or eight values within it, I calculate the mean because the mean is easy to calculate is the sum of all of them divided by how many they are. I add all of them divided by eight and I get 16 as my mean. Then I need to come and calculate the standard deviation. Remember the standard deviation formula is S is equals to the square root of your sum of your observation minus your mean since we're using the sample so we'll use x bar squared divide by n minus one okay. and if we know that is the formula now when it comes to the summation summation means summing of the values so it means we have to sum everything that is in the bracket every time so we'll have to sum the first observation minus the mean squared the second observation minus the mean squared the third observation minus the mean squared and that is what we are doing with the summation at the top n minus one and we can substitute the mean we know that it's 16 we substitute the value of our mean and our n is eight and we calculate by using the calculator to do 10 minus 16 squared plus 12 minus 16 squared plus 14 minus 16 squared until you get all the values. And when you do all that and add them up, because it's the summation, you get 130 divided by seven. Now, everything that is underneath the square root, remember is the standard deviation, is, is your variance. So 130 divided by seven, if we take the square root of that, we get 4.3095. And this is the measure that tells us how far apart each value is from the mean, from the mean. And like I said, everything that is underneath the, the root sign is your sample variance. So if I take 130 divided by 7, I will get the variance of 